Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to unboxing and introduction of the Arduino 101. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the Arduino 101, what's on the board, what are its capabilities, how is it programmed, talk a little bit about its pros and cons, look at its power draw, and that's about it. So if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and let's get started. So one thing to know about the Arduino 101 is it doesn't have a microcontroller on it. It has an Intel processor that runs a real-time operating system, unlike a microcontroller where essentially the program is all it's running. That's the operating system. This has an operating system that it loads and that will then run software on that operating system. Besides just the processor, it has BLE capabilities, Bluetooth Low Energy built in, and a six axis accelerometer, which is pretty cool. This is all on the same chip. This is not separate chips. The chip itself or the processor itself has two, two cores. One is an x86 architecture and the one is a 32-bit ARC architecture, which I'm, I'm not too familiar with. Both clocked at 32 megahertz, so fast clock. Now this, this relates to what I mentioned earlier about the operating system. So the operating system basically provides a sandbox for the Arduino sketches. And the sandbox makes the processor appear a lot like an Uno, you know, the same type of pins, similar capabilities, but, all, but this time it has also the capabilities of the BLE, the Bluetooth Low Energy, and the 6 axis accelerometer, as well as a real-time clock, which I don't have listed here. But my guess is the chip itself has a lot more capabilities, but right now they just give you this sandbox that makes it appear a lot like an Uno. The chip itself is powered off of 3.3 volts, but the logic is 5 volt tolerant. So it has the 3 volt, 3 volt supply pin as well as the 5 volt pin, but the chip itself is running off of 3.3 volt. But it has level shifters for up to 5 volt logic. Okay, let's take a look at the board. Here I am clumsily trying to open the package. So this was $35, so a little more expensive than an Uno, but same form factor as you can see. I check for stickers. Unfortunately, there are no stickers. So I'm gonna bring up the board. You can see same size as the Uno. I'm gonna pause it right there. Here is the Intel Curie chip. Here is the level shifters that I was talking about. So here's two of them up here and one here. They're by TI. Here is flash memory, and I didn't dig deep to see what that was for. If someone knows, please comment. I don't know if that's to as extra memory or if that is where the operating system is booted from. I don't know. If you look at the chip, you can see it's very small for two cores and BLE and, and the accelerometer. Also notice you don't see any pins. You know, I, I don't know what this package is called, but it basically has the pins on the bottom of the chip. Notice two resets. So you have a reset here that just resets the Arduino sketch, but you also have this master reset. So the whole idea is when the board starts up, it has to boot up the operating system, which takes time. So if you want to reset everything and boot up the whole operating system again, which takes a number of seconds, you press the master reset. If you just want to reset the sketch, you're going to press this reset. Oh, also notice the Bluetooth antenna right here. You can see they took out the ground plane so it doesn't block the antenna. And then you have the antenna here in this corner. So there it is. I'm going to think I'm going to turn it to the side. Notice this. They went with the uh, the mini, what do you call it, mini B port, just like the Uno. You know, I feel the uh, the smaller USB connectors are, are more popular now, but I guess they were really trying to make it model after the Uno and the form factor. Okay, I think I do a close-up of the antenna so you can see it again, but that's about it. And there's the back of the chip. I have not, or not the chip, the board. I have not scanned this QR code, so I don't know where it takes me. Let me talk briefly about programming the 101. So for this, you're going to need the IDE 1.6.7 or later. Then you have to go to the, you know, if you're familiar with the new IDEs, you have to go to the board manager, 
find the Intel Curie board and then download that package for the Intel Curie board. I will warn you, it actually is pretty big, so it takes a while to download. The major libraries for it, or the libraries that are specific to the, uh, the 101 are the Curie BLE, which is for accessing the Bluetooth capabilities, the uh, IMU, which is for the accelerometer, and the real-time clock libraries. And then you have a lot of the traditional Arduino libraries, like, for instance, you have the serial library as well. Now, I want to show you real quick. They provide examples for these libraries, example sketches. Unfortunately, though, they don't really have documentation. So at least I didn't find it. And at the time of this video, I didn't see it. They don't have documentation that sort of spells out the libraries, the different functions. Also, when you program it, it takes a little bit longer to program if you're familiar with the, uh, I guess, the zero or the duo like that. And it also takes a little bit for it to start up after you get a sketch on it because the operating system has to boot up. I wanted to show you just some of the examples real quick. So if I go here, I have the 101 selected, and of course I got that by going to the board managers because it didn't come pre-installed. If I go here to the uh, the examples, I have you know my basic examples. Then when you get down here, you start to see some of the Curie examples. So a couple for the BLE, you know, a couple for the uh, the accelerometer. They also have a software serial one, and then the for the real time clock. But once again, if you want to do your own BLE, you kind of have to learn off the sketches, which is fine, but it'd be nice if they had a library. I also wanted to talk a little bit about its power draw because they do advertise this as a low power processor, and, and it is. But I, what I did here is I loaded the blink sketch, the simple blink sketch on the Curie and on the Uno, and then I used what you're looking at as screens from a you know, advanced power supply that basically captures real accurate the voltage, current, and then calculates the power that the device is drawing. Now, what I did is I powered it directly from VCC so you're not seeing power drawn by regulators. I bypassed the regulators. So you can look at the power draws. You know, don't look too much at the voltage and current because the voltage levels are different, but you can see the power is comparable. The UNO is a little higher, but they're close. Now, Keep in mind, though, that the Intel chip is much more powerful, much faster, you know, probably a lot more capabilities. It has the Bluetooth. It has the accelerometer. So it has a lot more going on and similar power draw to the Uno. But they advertise this as sort of this IoT you know, chip for IoT inventions or innovations or whatever. And so 70.7 milliamps or 70.8 and once again, it's going to vary depending on what you run on it. I'm just showing this as an example. It's still kind of high for an IoT device. If you're trying to do a battery power, uh, if the battery only has, I don't know, 2,000 milliamp hours, that's, that's only so many hours that it can run. So th this is a little bit of a complaint of mine. And also, you know, the Uno, the Atmega 328P, which is the chip on the Uno, that can get down to sub-100 microamps in sleep mode. Now, my guess, and I'm going to talk more about this when I do my complaints, is the Intel Curie probably has low power modes and sleep modes, but they're not exposing it to us yet. We can't access those from the Arduino IDE, so we need to run it at this power level, which if we want to make it battery power can be an issue. So here's my complaint section, and I'll, I'll put out before I say these, you know, I, overall I like the concept, the idea. And a lot of these complaints will probably go away as time goes on, or at least some of them. But one of my complaints, and this relates to what I was just talking about in the sleep mode, is the Arduino libraries are limited, and there's no way to access its advanced capabilities, and I know they must exist. Now, for an AVR chip, you know, I have the Arduino libraries, but if I want to do something more advanced, I can dig in the data sheet, I can use the registers, I can also maybe use AVR libraries to get to some of those more advanced features. I can't do it right now with the Arduino 101. Now it does say, Arduino has a note about how the real-time operating system is going to go open source, Intel still working on it. They say March 2016, right now it's early February. So hopefully that is coming. Also, Intel's not providing much information on the carrier. There's no data sheet. You know, the package information, the sizes, 
specifications saying what it can do. Uh, a lot of that is not specified yet. It may be because that's they're still working on it. This is more of an early release. And also, there's no idea on price. Now, all these other things will probably go away. The price thing kind of scares me a bit, but we'll see. I mean, Intel is a great innovative company, but also they're a big company, so they have to have pretty good margins on their products. So hopefully the price is, is reasonable if you want to actually leverage this into you know, IoT designs. That's it for unboxing and introduction of the Arduino 101. If you have anything that you think I missed or an important point, please share it in the comment section. Once again, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my website, forstronics.com. Thank you for watching.